Hey guys, I hope you're ready for some book reviews. <laughs> course I just recorded my update video for the month that kind of wraps everything up lets you know how I'm doing with my challenges and so this is where I'm going to be um, actually sharing my book reviews with you guys uh, again as I mentioned before I'm changing up the format a little bit I'm not showing you the um, screen anymore but I'm going to be reading from the screen and I will have the images up in the video so let's go ahead and start with my first um, book that I finished in the month of January and then you fall of McGuire's Corner Novel. This was the third book in the series. Originally, I started this book as a IWSG book club read, and I liked the first book so much that I decided to complete the series. So this is an overall star rating of five out of, um, five, out of five. And so here is my review. This is my favorite book of the series. Back in McGuire's Corner, we get to follow around one of the McGuire men in this installment instead of the ladies. Um, we've seen Bobby throughout the other two books, but in this one, we get down to the bottom of his womanizing reputation and get to meet a woman who may just fit right in with the whole McGuire clan. <clears throat> just as in previous books, um, there is a serious um, crime mystery happening along with the challenges of, challenges of defining a relationship between two people who think they're only in it for physical reasons. Um, there are quite a few twists and turns in this installment. Some were shocking, some were predictable, but still had a compelling reveal, and some were sad. Um, plus, we get, an even more, um, get even more of the charm of McGuire's Corner that we haven't seen before, although it struggles to keep that charm by the end. I'm not giving away any. <laughs> the main female lead in this installment isn't as problematic as the first two, but even she has a moment of damsel brain where she could have prevented something simply by saying something, but then we wouldn't have as much suspense. Overall, I really liked Cassidy and even like her backstory, though tragic. While Jack will always be my favorite chief, Bobby does pretty well. I like that he's not over the top the way Reese was, but still has all the basic qualities that make a leading man so dreamy. With that said, it doesn't excuse some of the stupid things he does or doesn't say in the story. Oddly enough, <laughs> it's very relatable. I can see so many men doing the exact same things. Not all men, but a lot. <laughs> um, the steam level is pretty consistent with the first two books, but there may be a few extra explicatives in this one. Still very tasteful. I am recommending this to adult readers only. Recommend it to adult fans of romantic suspense and crime dramas. So this I thought was a perfect ending to this series. As far as I know, this is the last book. Um, and it just kind of wraps it up really well. You really, by the end of it, have a clear vision of this whole McGuire clan. They're not the they're not what you what, what at least they weren't where I expected in the first book you know this family that's been in this town forever the town is named after me and they own everything in the town like like it, you understand why some of the characters in the book are leery of the McGuire clan but as you read the stories you come endeared to them and yeah I really enjoyed it and um I'm so glad um I read these books I did hear that the author isn't um writing any more books in the series I'm not sure if she's um publishing at all right now but it was an absolute honor to have discovered this um, writer after all of these years of not knowing that she and I are both part of the same IWSG community. So it was, I really enjoyed it. All right, let's go to my next book. Humans are the Problem, a Monster Anthology. And this is an anthology I discovered um, through Kickstarter because of several different um, authors that I've either read or supported or something in some other way I came across this. And I absolutely, love the cover of this book. I received it in print form and um, also have a digital copy. It came with a cute little, some stickers. I mean, I just, I just knew that this was going to be an enjoyable read before I even started it, but I still had to read it to make sure that that's what it was. So I'm going to go through my review. Um, my overall rating for this is a four and let's just get into it. All right, so it says, <laughs> I haven't done the math, but I think a four 
is a good rating for this fun anthology I discovered on Kickstarter. <laughs> I really like the cover art and sticker it came with. Plus, it features a story from one of my favorite authors. This collection didn't wow me the way I hoped, but I really enjoyed it. Here's my breakdown. And then this is where I break down each of the stories in kind of like one line. All right, the first one is Root Rot, a tooth fairy retelling, and I gave it a four. Taffy Sweet, What Lurks Under a Bridge, a four. The Dawn Woman, Ancestry.com meets the ring, but with YouTube instead of VHS, a four. Um, who We Are, um, When Monsters Escape the Laugh, I gave that one a four. Aquarium Diver, a cool sequel to the blog, I gave that a five. Um, nothing personal, not the kind of love triangle you're thinking, and I gave that one a five. I don't want to really explain that because it'll give it away, but it's really, it's a love triangle, but not what you're thinking. <laughs> um, wolf, uh, a werewolf puppy, sad. Um, I gave that one a four. If wishes were a burial story, kind of magical, I gave that one a three. Um, on this side of the veil, a medium who doesn't waste her time. And I gave that one a five. Um, Epic Troll, the troll under the bridge retelling. I gave that one a five. Um, Man of Seaweed and Reeds, um, kind of like Swamp Thing. I gave it a four. The Sound, something happens in the woods. I gave that one a two. And I'm not trying to be extra critical on that one. This was just the story that I had a really difficult time processing. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. Someone else might give it a higher rating. It just didn't really, I don't know. I just had trouble processing it. Um, next is a uh, poor butcher bird, a uh, payback from a vampire. I gave that one a four. Crack up the bat. This is zombies and racism. I gave that one a four. Um, a clean kill, a father and daughter face off with tiny evil creatures. I gave that one a four. The fingernail man, when the boogeyman isn't the worst monster. I gave that one a five. It is chilling. I, yeah, it's just, I gave it a five. It scared me. <laughs> um, and just, in, I, yeah. <laughs> the next one is Mia Tupa. Um, doppelgangers are the worst. I gave that one a four. The next one is In the House of Elementals. Um, a psychic and a benevolent spirit team up. I gave that one a four. Passed on. Um, a vampire contemplates creating another. I gave that one a three. The Blanche. Um, a messed up explanation for SIDS. I gave it a four. And I gave it a four mainly because it's disturbing. Um, creative, obviously. Just, I, yeah, I gave it a four. <laughs> The next one, uh, my friend Nessie, um, Loch Ness Monster Protects Her Friend. Um, this one was dark, like a lot of the stories in it, but it also was kind of sweet. I don't know, it's just, I, yeah. Uh, the next one is Laurel's First Chase. Um, Mom and Daughter, Will They, Won't They Hunt? I gave that one a three. And lastly, um, that was it. <laughs> this is recommended to adult fans of monsters, creatures, and satirical dark fiction. I mean, it might also be suitable for teens. Just, it just feels like more of an adult read to me. All right, so let's look at my next read. The next one is Satellite Blues, Book One, Dark Matters. This was an IWSG book club read. Um, it was extremely short. Um, I gave it an overall star rating of three. And my review is also very short. So let's see what I have. I liked this short book, but didn't care for the ending. I felt like everything was left unresolved. I thought there would be more and perhaps there is in another installment. Ultimately, I find the title very fitting though the cover art is lacking. Still, if there's more to it, I'd be interested in reading it. Not sure if I'd recommend it, but for those who enjoy short and challenging read, this could be a good fit. So this is one of those stories where I would definitely read more of it because I kind of want more of it. Like I just, it, I mean, it had, a, I guess, I guess it had a distinct ending, but the ending for some reason didn't sue. Someone else might read it and think, oh yeah, that's, that was the perfect ending. It made sense to them. But for me, I was just like, hmm. Okay, I, and I don't know, but I would definitely read more of it. So, okay, 
let's see what's next. The next one is the Glass Gargoyle, The Lost Ancients, number one. And this was the other IWSG book club read for the month of January. I love the fact that we're able to get pretty diverse in some of the reads that we have. This one is not a short story. It was, it was a novel. Um, my overall good read rating is a four, but when I get to my review, you'll see that that's not the actual rating. So let's just get to it. <clears throat> actual rating, 3.75. This was a fun story overall, but for some reason, it didn't wow me the way I expected it to. It started out great and pulled me in right away. The story never dulled, but the plot seemed repetitive at times. The main character, Taryn, is a, is a bit self-deprecating, but still lovable overall. Plus, she can be pretty tough sometimes. By the end, though, she does begin to realize that she isn't as simple as she once thought. In the IWSG book club discussion about this book, I mentioned a few Scooby-Doo reveal moments. It seems no one in this book is who they say or think they are by the end, except for the fairies. Plus, the fairies are by, my far, by, are by far my favorite aspects of the story, though none of the characters are bad. Even the villains are really good at being bad. Um, I was amused by the plethora of creatures introduced and referenced in this book, but I wish I had seen more of them in action. I also wish I had a better understanding of the magic in this world. It seems as though the magic is supposed to be limited in some way to society and in another way to Terran, but that doesn't stop the magic from being used all the time in increasingly powerful ways. It's a little confusing. Um, then there are the two great mysteries of the plot, the legend of the elves and who is Alric. I thought by the end of this book, I'd be going crazy trying to get to the bottom of these, of trying to get to the bottom of both of these, but I wasn't. Yes, I'm curious. I'd love to read more in the series and eventually get down to the bottom of all of this, but I'm not in a hurry. Recommended um, as a fun distractor read for fans of fantasy, whimsical sword and sorcery, and strong female characters. So I, I think I did get the second book. Um, I want to see it's this. Is, I'm pretty much at this state where I liked the first book, but it didn't wow me. I'm going to read the second book. And if it doesn't wow me, then I'll probably not read the rest of the series. But if the second book does wow me, then I'm, I'm all in because I am curious at this point. I just, I don't know. It's the book started out so great. I just had these, maybe my expectation, expectations were just too high. I don't want you to think in any way that the book is not good. I mean, I, I chuckled throughout it. So it's a very entertaining read. I just, I think I expected it to be more than it was for me personally. I happen to know for a fact that other people in the book club who read this book loved it. I know one of the, um, people who read it binge the entire series. So that just lets you know that every reader is different. And even though I didn't love it, doesn't mean you wouldn't. So, and let's look at the last thing that I read. Um, Strong Female Characters, Busy Writer's Guide number one. Um, I've read another book by Marcy Kennedy and I um, really like the way she um, writes. So I, I kind of pushed this in right at the end of the month because um, Chris Fay, um, author, blogger, activist, um, decided to do a challenge this year, and I decided to participate. So this was my um, Read with Fay challenge, um, where I basically read nonfiction that in some way hones my um, creativity or me as a writer. And so my overall Goodreads star rating is a five, but that's not my actual rating. So let's look in my review. It's a short one. Actual rating, 4.75 not too shabby. I knew this book would be short when I picked it up. That's why I picked it up. I wanted something short. Still, the end of the book came unexpectedly fast. I think a few more examples could have given it a little more length and depth. Other than that, this is just what I expected and I have no major complaints. I like the way the author tackles her subjects and organizes her words. Perhaps this author could release a practice guide as a companion for this because practice is really what's needed to break down some of the societal barriers that limit or restrict characters based on sex and gender. Highly recommended to anyone wanting to hone their skills as a writer, especially for those who want to write better female characters. 
So yeah, this was a very short read, um, but very um, powerful and impactful. No major complaints. That is what I read in the month of January. Um, let me know what you guys read. Let me know what you thought about what I read. Make some recommendations. I'm all for it. You know that. And let's see if I can keep this up throughout the year. Okay, guys. Um, I'm already doing really well with my February reading, but I will wait to talk about that later. So stay safe out there. Be blessed.